be me. Half year ago. D&D 5th edition. March's dungeon crawl on roll 20. Have a halfling rogue, halfling barbarian, human wizard, and human cleric. Levels 7 to 9. Party wants a beefy tank since the barbarian is all dex. Okay I can make a tank. By the way you're starting at level 4. Need to tank for a party twice my level. Going to crank armor as high as inhumanly possible. Ask DM if unearthed arcana races are Gucci. Get the AK for the one I want. Unleash the juggernaut. 14 the unearthed arcana warforge fighter forge cleric. Made purely for war hundreds of years ago deep underground. Hidden creation forge was destroyed in a sabotage attack that caused a cave in. Trapped in an underground tunnel by himself with no light or tools. Spends 5 years unburying himself digging through rubble in the dark. Find enough wood and scraps to make torches. Burn up all the oxygen finding out where he is. Start digging again. 5 years later find the forge. Burn all the oxygen while beating an old pick into shape by hand. 10 years later finds the coal vein but no air. 20 years later uncovers one of the air pipes leading to the surface. Air leads to a goblin infestation. 60 years later fully restored the forge to complete operation. Becomes a forge cleric as the smithing god is proud of his boy. 100 years later uncovered most of the complex. 100 years after that he has purged the creatures from his home. 100 years later he sees the sun for the first time. Emerges from the ground 400 years after his creation. 400 years of digging, forging, and killing. Time for revenge. Party at the entrance of a dungeon discussing how to go in. Get their first look at 14 as he marches out of the forest. 8 feet tall, 400 pounds. Constantly casting 3 different thaumaturgy effects when not doing anything else. Voice booms like thunder, eyes glow gold and emit smoke, ground shakes when he walks. Wears nothing but chainmail and a red and silver monastic scapula, carrying nothing but a very large warhammer and a shield, bashes down the door in one swing and starts descending without a word. Party suggests that the low level should hang at the back or middle, give them the stair and keep going. Party has a spare set of plate armor they bolt around him, plus one armor from WF, plus one from fighting style, plus one from forge blessings. Combine with plate and shield for 23 AC. Party has been in this dungeon before. Knows the room ahead is full of ogres. Start to cast shield of faith to hit 25 AC. Other cleric is a bro and reads my mind. Does it first. Bust down the door and stride into the middle of the room. 4 ogres on different corners all face 14. 14 calmly looks around as the party stares in horror. Activate voice changer I set up ahead of time. Super deep echoing mechanical voice. I am the anvil. Ogres all charge. Can only hit on 19 to 20. All their attacks bounce off harmlessly. I am the hammer. Smash warhammer against shield. Rings like an anvil and the warhammer bursts into flames from searing smite. And I shall draw you out. Starts pummeling the ogre directly in front of him. Rest of the party starts piling into the room and unloading on the ogres. 14 stands and fights them all every round. When one goes for someone else 14 smashes it with the hammer while it leaves, follows it while ignoring the attacks of the others, then beats it into the ground. Rogue hides under 14 scapula since she's short. Ogres get distracted by the big flaming hammer. Don't expect a rapier to pop out from between the robot's legs to stab them in the junk. Obliterate the ogres in the room and move on without a scratch. Further in the dungeon, few more minor scuffle. Rogue keeps getting sneak attacks and refuses to come out from under 14 scapula. It's like mount rules but the mount is on top. Keep correcting her on terminology but she keeps referring to it as a dress or skirt. Barbarian keeps making fun of 14 for having the rogue between his legs. What's it like having something down there robot? Length 36 inches. Weight 40 pounds. Familiarity normal. Wizard is struggling to breathe. Barbarian is impressed. Was comparing halfling to a smithing apron with tools. Heathens. Find a flowing stream of smelly and odd looking water. Cleric wants to study it later. Rogue is sure it's poisonous. 14 just drinks several gallons of it to store for later. Gets an extra stealth disadvantage for sloshing while he walks. Apparently it's more noticeable than the ground shaking. Smash down another door. Find a room with an elven princess surrounded by plants. Wounded and has been trapped for who knows how long. 14 spent nearly half a millennia stuck underground. Don't need a nose to smell this BS. Fuel my fire. Burning hands the room. Plants all turn into mushrooms. Elf turns into hideous mushroom monster. Wizard asks DMWTF that thing is. Passes religion and arcana check. DM it's Zugboy. An avatar of Zugnoi. 
No. It's Zugboy. Oh. Slam the door back onto the frame. Leave. Couple days later come back. Hit level 5. Grabbed shield master to bash and pummel people. Down the stairs again. Rooms all reset. Ogre room up ahead. Kick down the door again. 8 ogres this time. With multi attack. Well shit. Someone randomly points out that the new Eberron book dropped. Official war forged. Get an official copy instantly online definitely legal. DM gives the AK to upgrade. Party stares in awe as 14 gets bigger and stronger before their eyes and the plate is absorbed into his body. Juggernaut protocol engage. Hammer time. Start obliterating ogres. Only two can reach the hallway at a time. More keep showing up. Two men are for the party to deal with. Wizard casts wall of fire. 14 walks through the flames and drags fleeing ogres back into it one by one. Finish them off and dig around the dungeon before leaving again. Few sessions later. No more barbarian so 14 is only tank. Still no magical gear. Doesn't need it. With a shield his natural AC is 24 thanks to more levels. All offensive problems can be solved with percussive maintenance. Going into a nearby city that is currently going through an apocalyptic zombie outbreak. DM is just rolling dice and adding more zombies to a giant map every turn. Hundreds of weak enemies that are easy to hit and have awful attack scores. Exactly the combat 14 was made for. Avoid most of the hordes and go through the alleys as we make straight for a college in the middle of town that is being besieged. Use prestidigitation and thaumaturgy to create noises and lure away zombies. Make our way inside. Bunch of cloistered scholars and scared people taking shelter. Send our magic nerds to talk to their magic nerds to find out what's going on. Notice a child with his mother in the corner. Kid won't stop crying. Crying keeps attracting more zombies to the door. After a few turns and lots of arguing 14 goes to check out the kid since mom won't shut him up. Upon closer inspection the child is crying because mom is undead and trying to eat him. Grab the kid by the collar and the zombie mom by the face. Remove kid and toss zombie across the room. Set down kid and crush the zombie's head with a hammer. We'll pay for his therapy later. Get a map of the city and start identifying survivors from the tower in the college. Party can't decide who to save. Keep arguing while zombies keep flooding into town. 14 takes over and charts the most efficient route to reach as many places where we know there are as many survivors as possible in one go. It is time to test our metal. Let us not be found wanting. First stop is the burning orphanage directly across the street. Only issue is it's 3 stories tall and there are about 100 zombies in the way. Press digitation and thaumaturgy to create sounds of screaming from other side of the college to lure horde away. Sneak across the street. Can't decide how to get kids out. 14 grabs the rogue from underneath him and throws her through the third story window. Wizard goes up next with a boost. 13 orphans and the headmistress all stuck. Rogue has a rope but the kids are too scared and probably too weak. Sorcerer and cleric see zombies turning around and starts blasting. No time. Rogue and wizard start throwing children out the window so 14 can catch them. Most are terrified but a few seem to be having fun with it. Princess catch the headmistress as the rogue and wizard go down a rope. Shepherd everyone back into the college without losses while mages pop any zombies that get too close. Make a great distraction by running away from the college on our way to the next person. Shop owner is on top of his store surrounded by zombies that are climbing up. Can't clear them out and too many to divert. Wizard and 14 do some math and work out a plan. Wizard mage hands the rogue's other rope over to the shopkeeper. Yell at him to tie it around his waist. Hand the other end to 14. Cost feet the fall on shopkeeper tell him to lay down and hold on tight. 14 yanks him off the building with all the power you would expect of an 8 foot tall forge machine. Shopkeeper flies over all the zombies and crashes into the wizard. Shopkeeper dislocated a shoulder and threw out his hip but he'll live. Pick him up and carry on. Third building got overrun so we moved on. Fourth was a pie shop that was surrounded. Go around back and break down the wall. Inside are the three happiest. Fattest halflings we've ever seen. In or at the size of these lads. The largest family. 14 can't even carry more than two of them. Refuse to leave without several massive sacks of pies. FFS. Can't walk them back since moving that far might kill them. Hustle them out of the house and help them waddle down to the river that runs through the city. Find a rowboat tied to the shore. Load the lard asses in and the weight makes it dangerously close to sinking. Pull them out in plan. Load the rest of the party in first. Floats fine. 14 comes to the conclusion that the Lardass family are all so fat they are likely bound. Test the hypothesis and they do indeed float more or less. Lash them to the sides of the boat like life preservers. 
party will just row while 14 jogs along the shore. The way we came is upriver and the largest family makes the boat so slow it can't keep up with the current. Tell the rogue to tie the rope to the front of the boat. Gives 14 the other end. 14 takes it and walks straight into the water. 30 feet underwater 14 puts the rope over his shoulder and starts walking. Pull the boat half a mile upstream from the bottom of the river. A few zombies at the bottom but 14 just grabs them by the head and squeezes without slowing down. Drag the party to the keep in the middle of the river. Connected to the rest of the city by a pair of long bridges that are guarded. Drop off the storekeeper and the lard asses. Only survivors left are the people in the college and the keep. Most of the city is on fire and it's spreading. Party can't decide what to do. Once again, 14 has a solution. Send a message to both groups to get to the top of their buildings. Drag the boat upriver with the party in tow. All the way upriver. Straight to the dam at the edge of the city. Mechanism is operated by a massive gate with winches. Climb to the top. Gate is jammed. Start operating the winch by hand and manually raising the gate with super strength. Goes up a couple feet before it jams up again. Stuck. Massive chain links thicker than your arm keeping it attached. Smash winch system with big ass hammer. Doesn't work. Rogue gives up. What now? 14 does the closest thing he can to a chuckle. I require a larger hammer. Start yanking cogs and metal from anything he can. Use forge cleric ability and skill checks to make an absolutely massive maul. Easily the size of 14 and made entirely of metal. Estimated the weight at around 500 pounds. Wizard casts in large on 14. Picks up the maul and walks over to the chains. Costs heat metal on one of the links. Waits until it turns a nice orange glow. Smash it to bits. Half the damn gate loses its support and is off the ground enough to start falling. Other chain is still holding on barely. Shatter its chain with the hammer. Gate drops as the water behind it surges. Ripped out of place as the river floods into the city. Waters wash through and start destroying houses and sweeping away undead. Only buildings to survive are large stone ones like the keep and college. Still thousands of undead milling about outside the city but it's a start. As the party levels up 14 takes his next level in cleric and his massive maul starts to glow red in his hands. Steam forms where he stands as the heat evaporates the water around him. DM rules it as a small fog cloud that does damage from the burning to anything near him. Won't have any more free days with everyone's schedule. Party has to keep moving but 14 stays behind to finish the job. Tiri goodbyes as the party goes to find the source of the undead. For weeks the survivors in the city watch as a cloud of fog slowly descends on the streets. All they can hear is the moaning of undead, occasional cracks of shattering bone, and a constant quiet hiss in the distance. Some claimed to see flashes of orange light like lightning when they heard the shattering bones or pounding of metal. Others said there were newly burned and mangled corpses floating downstream. Still others swore they could see a pair of glowing golden lights when the fog was thicker and the air grew hot. Rumor spread of a guardian spirit that boiled away the taint in the water and protected those who went foraging for food. Eventually the fog lifted and the survivors were left with an empty city. Small dams ran across nearly every street redirecting water to drain most of the districts. Undead were gone, bodies piling in great mounds downriver. No sign of their guardian anywhere. A few weeks later a series of villages reported an odd bubbling in the middle of their stream. A steady wake of boiling water and steam. All of them said it never stopped going upstream. Shrines were built to honor the elusive savior. The forge in the fog. The machine of the mist. The steam engine. Is it just me or does Felix have a bit of a fetish for tank builds? I think this is the third one we've done now. Or wait, no, actually, no, he does like clerics as well. We've done a few clerics. Like, you know, if you can't remember that fat monk. Can't remember the name of him now. He was quite good. I really enjoyed him. But no, if you haven't noticed, I'm a massive fan of Felix. And I'm just sad to see that, you know, we've almost finished all of his stories. And yeah, I've been doing them quite a lot over the past couple months. But I just can't help myself. I, I just really enjoy his stuff. And I think it's really good. And it'd be a shame not to help share his stories about, you know, for more people to get to enjoy them and lead them and you know like i i, I just really enjoy them <laughs> I, but like no enough of me gushing enough of that let us know what you thought about this story i really enjoyed this one and the idea of 14 becoming this almost mythical being that helps clean up the zombie infestation and like you know he's like 
he's like a walking robot and no one would really know what he is so like you know you can imagine the amount of like urban legends that would be built up around him I don't know I just really enjoy that that's my type of shit <laughs> what can I say but like let us know what you thought down below and I'll see you in the near future so I've recently moved Nick Badia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs Listings are below the video and in the description. So I am an affiliate of NordVPN. If you have been thinking of getting a VPN with everything going on at the minute NordVPN is offering 75% off a 3 year plan. I have been using Nor myself for a few years now because it helps support a lot of the people I like to watch on YouTube and I think it's pretty cool they have let me become an affiliate. So check out norvpn.org forward slash nickbeardier and use coupon code nickbeardier for 75% off while the offer is on. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services!